Hello and welcome to Warrior Chat Wednesdays with Whitney Carrion. We took a little hiatus over the holidays, recovering from the crazy sicknesses going around, but we are back. Warrior Chat Wednesdays is a full 30 minutes dedicated to you, warrior parents, willing to stand up against the societal norms that are being pushed on you and your children. It's saying no to gender neutral bathrooms, no to teaching pedophilia in the classrooms and burning the American flag because somebody's feelings got hurt. It is standing for the flag, kneeling before the cross and only handing out trophies when they are earned. Our voices have been suppressed for so long because the minute we speak our minds, we fear an uprising, a riot, looting, or physical violence on ourselves or our children. This isn't a discussion about race or equality. This is now a discussion about protecting the morals, values, and beliefs that we wish to impart and teach on our children. And it's not allowing the government, to public, nor big pharma to co-parent with us. It's time that we prove we are the not so silent majority and we are here to stay. So today on this week's episode, I wanted to actually discuss something that I recently encountered and it blew my mind and it was such an eye opener to what is happening in society today and the way over these past two years that the government, big pharma, and the media have been swaying our belief systems, our actions, and our reactions to normal everyday occurrences. So let me dive in a little bit. So now this is a personal encounter of something that happened to me, but I feel like there is such a lesson here, not just for adults to learn, but for us as parents to learn when we're teaching our children the way to behave in normal society, right? Everyone has their own beliefs. Everyone has their own values that they want to teach. But this is just another example of conservative values just being walked all over and just being dismissed. Now, the Lord Jesus says to love all people. It says in the Bible to love all people. That means all human beings. That means all races. That means even the sinners. That is something that is so big and it's something that is taught many, many times throughout the Bible. I bet if you tried to count how many times the word love was in the Bible, you'd run out of fingers and toes to count them on. So that's something that even when I struggle, that's something that as a human being and as a parent, I try really, really hard to teach my children. Oftentimes I tell them, just like my mother and my father told me, no matter what, I will always love you. I may be disappointed in some actions that you take. I may be disappointed in your behavior, but no matter what, I'll never stop loving you, loving you and I'll never start, stop guiding you on the correct path. So I live in a military town and if you know anything about military towns, they are very run down, which is unfortunate. Um, most of the time, at least in army towns, U.S. Army towns, um, they're kind of in the middle of nowhere and the surrounding town outside of the military base is often pretty run down. It has a hard time thriving and surviving, um, which is sad. Um, and it's just because there's constantly soldiers and families rotating in, rotating out, right? And so um, we've never really lived in a location that was super duper thriving. And so this location is no different. And the other day I saw that a new nail salon went up and I told my husband, oh wow, like a brand new nail salon. And mind you y'all, there are about 12 nail salons in this town, but not a single one of them gives excellent service. Not one of them. And it's unfortunate as a business owner, as somebody who's worked in the service industry my whole life, either as a waitress, as a server, as a bartender, as a beverage cart girl, as a hostess. I worked in customer service my whole life. I worked in the service industry. I was a shampoo girl, like just all the things that require service, right? And so it's so unfortunate that in a rundown town, it's almost like a lot of the businesses in the area just kind of take that attitude as well. It's like, take it or leave it. This is the service we have you um you know exactly have your pick of the litter and because of that you have to accept what we give you right 
And so I went into this new salon with my husband for my birthday and the service was excellent. Excellent. I mean, everything was clean. It was brand new. The people greeted you with smiles on their faces and, um, uh, every product that they had was really clean and, um, it just was a very luxurious experience. And in my mind, in my personal level of preference of desires, that was what my level of excellence was. I, I, that it was matched for the first time. I was like, wow, like, I mean, they were kind, the service was amazing, the place was immaculate, the um, staff was really engaging, everything was very professional, the music was tranquil, like all the things, right? So I was so excited. I couldn't wait to hurry out of there and post in all of the military spouses groups that they had to go run and try this new nail salon about how excited I was about it, okay? So... First of all, right, you always know when you post something on social media that you just, there's always going to be a hater somewhere, right? I wrote an essay review, essentially, and I forewarned everyone, this is going to be the longest review, but I feel like it's so needed to go over every detail of excellence that was in this detail, etc. So at one point, I said, you know, it was so nice to that even though some of the staff um, didn't know a lot of our language, that they tried to engage in conversation with me, that they were very bubbly, that they actually asked throughout the whole process if, you know, I enjoyed this part, if I liked that part, you know, is your nail shape okay? You know, I went into detail about that. And of course, some Karen said, well, what's wrong if they didn't speak your language? What's the issue with that? And I said, what? There's, there's nothing wrong if they don't speak my language. I love that instead of just having a side conversation with their friends and just kind of like whipping my hand around as they were having conversations, as I've experienced in past at other nail salons, like I loved that even though um, the English was broken, even though they couldn't have a lot of conversation, that they were trying and that they were focusing on me and they were giving me service. Like that was so heartwarming to me and this woman just could not get over the fact that she was trying to find in this category essay of a positive review that I was somehow being negative. She went as far as say, I clearly must be racist, um, how I'm such an entitled xenophobe and I just was falling out of my chair. I, I tried. <laughs> I tried to lean in like Jesus and love like Jesus. And I said, I'm so sorry that you misunderstood um, the point here. There is no way, shape or form of me actually, you know, saying I wasn't appreciative of people that come here who speak different languages. And I said, furthermore, um, just to give you like a little bit of background on who I am, I am married to someone from a different country. I have procreated with somebody from a different country. In two months, our family is moving to another country where no one speaks English. And I've spent the last four months in immersive language courses to be able to show the respect to the country and actually try to learn the language and give them the same respect that I was so appreciative that I was receiving here at this nail salon. And I was so appreciative that somebody was trying so hard to learn our language. And furthermore, this woman was so kind. She told me her life story of how she came over here. I'm bragging on this business and I'm telling y'all to hurry up and go there. Needless to say, y'all, there was no winning this woman over. And I just had to drop it. And, you know, I just was so overcome with frustration and I probably shouldn't have been, right? Because take the higher ground, but here's the lesson. There wasn't any right thing I could say to the wrong person. And I don't know if she was born this way. And I don't know if her, if her parents raised her this way. I don't know if she was simply having a bad day, but for whatever reason, she could not let it go. She appeared to have the same color skin as I do, but she had extremely different um, beliefs as I did because for whatever reason, I'm a xenophobe and I'm a racist. 
this woman has no idea that my family comes from very mixed cultures, very mixed races. But I took this opportunity after my frustration settled down to reflect on it. And here's what the lesson was. I realized that, again, I don't know how she was raised and I don't know what transpired in her life that led her to believe that people are just quick to racism and people are just quick to xenophobia. But I will say this, the last two years, it has been obvious that there has been a massive push to sway our belief system into believing that open discussions are labeling you black or white on one side of an agenda. That whenever we have a discussion about politics, you're either this way or you're that way. That whenever we have a discussion about religion, you're either this way or that way. That when we have a discussion about cultures and um, religious beliefs, about um, languages, you're this way or that way. And I'm telling you right now that I think it is so important that we teach our children that there is not always just black and white when it comes to those topics. Now, I personally am of the belief system and our family is of the belief system that the Bible is the rule, right? The Bible is the rule. Even when the government isn't necessarily reflecting the Bible. We also take into account that the Bible was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago as well. And it was interpreted for what was being taught and what the rule of thumb and the rule of the law was during that time. But I happen to know, and I believe so many of you happen to know as well, that our Lord Jesus made our world a quilted, colorful palette. Not just colors of skin, not just colors of personality, not just colors of religions and cultures, but also beliefs, all right? Also beliefs. And the things that he didn't create in colors, the laws and the land that he didn't create in colors, those are black and white. But all the things that we are talking about here today, religions, belief systems, cultural traditions, languages, how we're raising our children, those are colorful. And we need, and I believe it is our duty to teach our children that if we don't accept other people, that our world is always gonna be at war. We don't have to agree. We don't have to be, um, we don't have to agree with, we don't have to accept other people's beliefs, but we have to love them anyways. We have to appreciate them anyways. And we don't, we certainly don't have to browbeat them, harass them, make them be, feel fearful to walk in public, have them label these awful, hideous names that could eventually turn into stars sewed on our shirts or could eventually turn into identification cards saying whether we did or did not get a jab. That is how the division in our country begins. It started as a slow trickle. It started as two weeks to flatten the curve. It started as a couple racial injustices that were broadcasted all over the news. It started as some some awful media coverage about some trials that occurred in which some elites were abusing children that wasn't covered at all. And it's caused this massive divide in people. And I think that because of all this massive light showing on subjects that are colorful and they're being shown to be only this way or that way, it has caused the division in our country. It has caused a division in our culture. It's caused this, this acceptance where children are allowed to be bullied. They're allowed to choose genders now. They're allowed to harass people for not having the same belief system. And that is so wrong. That is not what was intended when our founding fathers claimed America. That was not what was what was decided when our constitution was written. And I promise you, 
when the Lord created Adam and Eve, and he said, go forth and procreate. He did not say only in these colors, only with these, with these cultures. People of color of different countries were created and the level of melanin in their skin was due to the environment in which they were living in to allow them to adapt and thrive in those specific environments. And if we're saying that if you're not this color or that color, you're wrong. If you don't believe this culture or that color, you're wrong. If you don't believe this polit political agenda or that political agenda, you're wrong. We've gotten so far away from our values. We've gotten so far away from the conservativeness. And you and I know that there is more than one way to skin a cat, to slice an orange, whatever the thing. But at the end of the day, we need to reflect on the values that are most important to us. And I think that at the end of the day, it should come down to a few things. Love thy neighbor as I love you. Respect our neighbor as I respect you and follow the law of the Bible above all things. So this moment was a horrifying moment to go through, to realize this is what our society is coming to, especially in a military community that is so diverse, so diverse and such a melting pot that I'm instantly being called a xenophobe and a racist. <laughs> When it's literally impossible as I'm I'm married to someone a different color skin. I chose to reproduce with them. I'm moving to a third world country. But she chose instead of getting to know me, instead of respecting me, instead of asking questions to further understand a statement that I made on social media, she decided to label me, to slap me with her beliefs and to say, you are wrong. You are disgusting. You're what's wrong with this world and live with hate in your heart. So I think we need to teach our children. I think as parents, it's so important to teach our children to love and accept all people. We don't have to agree. We don't have to take those beliefs in as our own, but we have to love and we have to respect and we have to save that negative, nasty energy and not put it out in the world. Because what you put out, you're going to get back. And I think that's what's most important at the end of the day. So kind of a stinky situation to go through, but a great lesson nonetheless. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that the keyboard warrior learned anything from our conversation, even though I tried and tried to lead with love. Maybe somebody else will succeed. But at the end of the day, my children and my family will know better. I'm going to raise my babies to love your babies. I'm going to raise my babies to respect your babies. At the end of the day, I hope you do the same. Thanks, y'all.